it'll be a quick one today for our lunch and learn on Thursday. Thank you for joining me. If you're watching this live, put hashtag live. And if you're watching it as a replay, just stick a hashtag replay. It helps me to know who's watching. And also you can stick in any comments at any time. Um, and, any, any, and, then, 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 then. <laughs> and any questions that you might have, um, pop them in the comments and I will get back to you. So today we're talking about boundaries. Now you may or may not know that I'm running a uh, group at the moment called Frazzled to Fantastic and the guys over there have been working on evaluating essentially where um, a huge part of their time is being spent up, spent up, being spent um, and how to um, how to change that, and uh, we didn't have time really to go into well, what do you do when you've do, when you've realised that someone is taking up a huge amount of your headspace, or it could be one member of your team, or it could be a member of your family, or you know, lots of areas of our lives that are being uh, gobbled up in spaces that perhaps aren't. Um, very good for us at all. So there was a time in my life, and certainly there have been a few times in my life actually, where I've lost my sense of self due to the needs of everybody else. And when we don't hold boundaries, that's what happens. So when we live our lives, you know, really deeply connected to what is us and what we want as well of course we have duties as well that we need to do as parents and as um, children of parents and and families and, and all sorts but um those things um must come after us so me first right and that's not selfish that's how we preserve our energy to ensure that we can help others so um do keep listening because i'm going to tell you exactly why and how you can hold your boundaries and, and why in fact it's really difficult to do that so to hold a boundary you must first think about what is okay and what is not okay for us so i often when i talk to my clients it's that's the first piece of work because I certainly went through life for a long time not even knowing what was okay and what wasn't okay um checking in with other people how do other people do life how you know this doesn't feel quite right for me but you know maybe that's just how we should do it and I always say come back to that gut feeling if it does not feel right for you then that is your boundary to hold um don't feel that your boundaries need to be the same as other people's boundaries. It will be different. So start with that. What is OK and what is not OK? And listen to your gut. So as a good example to this, um, I was trying to think of one just before I came on. It's like, what would be a good example? So for me, it's a really simple one. Um, I can't bear really loud music on when there are other things happening. So conversations going on or... Um, something I've got to concentrate on I just cannot do it and the, here's what happens okay is because the discomfort level is so high for me it's really easy for me to hold that boundary it's a case of your I either switch off the music or I say please I'm really sorry but can you turn that music down because I can't think that's me holding a boundary but the reason that, that boundary is really easy to hold is because the discomfort is high enough for me to do it. But there are boundaries that we need to hold where the discomfort level isn't particularly high because actually by holding that boundary, you are um, you are protecting yourself from something. So a good example of that, obviously, in the space that I work is burnout. So if I don't hold a boundary regarding my time, then down the line, I'm going to experience burnout. But for most people, for me, essentially, that was really hard to do until the discomfort of burnout was so high that I then had to ask people to step back. So I want you to really think about firstly, what's OK and what's not OK. And then I want you to think about where are you holding boundaries really easily and where are you struggling to hold boundaries? And I want to talk a little bit about that. Why do we struggle to hold boundaries? Um, what's driving that? And essentially, it's always going to come back to fear. So um, think for a moment around times where you've wanted to say no, but you've said yes. 
um, times where it has felt wrong, but you've just carried on anyway. And think about why. Why have you chosen that route rather than the route that your gut's telling you? So I'm going to take you through an example of um, saying yes when we mean no. Why might we do that? So say uh, somebody has reached out to us and said, you know, oh, I really need you to help out this evening at, at the school, something or other. And you know that you're up to here with everything. And what you really want to say is, no, I just can't take this on my plate. But what we end up saying is, yes, of course, I'll be there. So why are we choosing that yes? What is it that's going on that we choose that yes? So what I do with my clients is I take them through this process of, OK, so what's going on for you that you're saying yes? Well, and the answer will be, well, if I don't do it, I'll let them down. OK, so then we ask the next question. So if you let them down... What are you making that mean? And just to let that settle for a moment, if I let that person down, what does that mean? And generally, what does that mean about me? Or what am I making that mean about me? Well, I may be making it mean that um, I'm not a nice person, okay? So if I believe I'm not a nice person, there will be a belief there which is being held which might be, I have to be a nice person. I have to be a good person. And if I'm not a good person, then what will happen? And this is the bit, this is the bit where we get right down into the core of it, because it's always the same. Okay, so your driver for saying yes may not be because um, you want to be a nice person. It might be something else entirely. We're all very, very different, but there will be a reason why you're saying yes. And then we find out what that is, and then we keep delving down until we find what is that belief that you believe about yourself and is it true? And it always, when we take it right the way back, comes back to survival, right? So when we were um, cave people, if you like, or we lived in these packs of humans, if we were not seen as... Um, part of that group then we would be ostracized and if we were ostracized we would die we wouldn't survive we wouldn't be able to get food because we worked in a pack as a group um and that's us as humans now it's the same but of course we're not going to die now if we get ostracized from a group but we have the same visceral feeling that we might and that's the fear that we have that's the anxiety that comes up when we're not part of a of a group um, and it can be such a but it often is mostly is the biggest driver as to why we take on more than we need to and we don't look after ourselves um, so it really is about holding that up and going what's this really about why am I not able to say no um, just go a little bit deeper and then the big work is in letting that go, letting that belief go, for example. Well, you know, I actually know that I am a nice person and it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, by just saying no to something doesn't make me a bad person. And, um, and actually, even if it did, then I'm preserving my own self and my own sense of self and what I need to make sure that I'm healthy. So I hope that, that was really helpful. So I've got a um, little message there from Vicky saying fear of rejection, feeling like I'm not good enough. Yeah, exactly. So that fear of rejection is so huge within us because it's um, it's a whole body sensation. It's our body and our mind being taken over by this fear. But, you know, fear is a big fat liar. And I say this again and again. It's only fear. That's all it is. It's just fear and it's not serving you. So it's OK to let that go and to push through it and get brave and say no. And look after yourself because you are as important, if not more important than everyone else. And I can promise you when you go over this bridge and allow yourself to hold those boundaries, you'll have more energy. You'll have more to give. You'll have more to give to your community. That's the madness of it is that by saying no when you want to say no, then you decide when you can give and you have so much more energy to be able to do that. So thank you for joining in, Vicky. If you're watching this as a replay, please do pop in some comments and your thoughts 
around it and have a good lunch and I will see you this time next week, 12 o'clock every Thursday, just a quick one. <laughs>